in module 11.1, we are going to be talking about two unary relational algebra operators of select and project. And we already talked about these a little bit, and we said select returns a horizontal subset of tuples, while project is going to return a vertical subset of attributes, thereby reducing the degree of our relation, while our selection operation reduces the cardinality of the relation. So select returns a subset of tuples that satisfy some condition uh, in the relation. So we write the uh, relational algebra statement like this. Uh, this symbol here is a lowercase sigma, okay? And then R represents our relation, and the selection condition is a Boolean expression specified on one or more attributes in this relation R, okay? And then the relation R is generally a relational algebra operation the result of which is a relation, okay? So in its simplest form, R is just going to be a relation, right? And that's just is what it is. However, R can also be another relational algebra expression, which is going to evaluate to a relation. And the really neat thing that happens here is this means that relational algebra operations can be nested. And we're going to see a lot of examples of this as we move through class tonight. And almost always we're going to have a bunch of nested relational algebra operations, each of which is going to evaluate down to a relation and it's kind of a recursive uh, thing that happens. And then our Boolean expression or this selection condition has the general form of either the name of an attribute, some comparison operator, and then a constant value, or the name of an attribute, some comparison operator, and then the name of some other attribute, right? So we can evaluate the value of an attribute against some constant value. For example, if we were looking for all of our users or all of our employees who have a value of Smith, for last name, this is the type of Boolean expression we would write. Or if we wanted to see all of our employees who have a salary that's greater than 30,000, this is what our Boolean expression would uh, look like, right? And these Boolean expressions are either going to evaluate to true or false. So if uh, a certain employee had a value of 50,000 for this salary attribute, this expression would evaluate to true. And if they had a value of 25,000 for salary, this expression will evaluate to false, right? And then that tuple would not be returned in the resulting relation. Or we can compare the value of two attributes. So we could look at something like uh, looking at the number of credits a student needs to graduate uh, compared to how many credits they have completed. And we would only return tuples in this case where the credits needed is greater than or equal to the number of credits they've completed, meaning they're not ready to graduate at this point. Oh, and I should have mentioned earlier that as we're going through uh, these examples, we are going to uh, have a poll everywhere uh, activity on several of these. So uh, if you wanna go ahead and get into your poll everywhere device and, uh, and get logged in, um, I'm mostly going to be uh, just kind of looking for some completion, especially on these uh, these first couple that are coming up, just in case you need a minute to, uh, to get going. But we'll have uh, maybe a dozen or so of these uh, as we go through these next couple of slides. So imagine for a moment that for this relation R, this was the relation that we were uh, that we were interacting with, this relation course. Okay, so we want to select from this relation course where some criteria is true. Okay, so this is a relational algebra equation that might go along with this. So select from course where this criteria, ours equals three, evaluates to true. So for every tuple in this relation, we're going to ask, does this expression evaluate to true? Well, for this first tuple, intro to economics, ours has the value of three, so we would get true here. 
For the next tuple, we have a value of two for hours. Well, is two equal to three? No, so that's going to evaluate to false. Four, is four equal to three? No, so that's going to evaluate to false. Three equals three, that's true, 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 true. Does four equal three? No, that's false. So this tuple would not be returned, but these last three would, all right? So out of this relation that has, let's see, three, six, nine, 12 tuples, it looks like nine of them would be returned by, uh, by this relational algebra expression. And in our Boolean expression, we can have multiple criteria. So we could say something like we're going to ask uh, for tuples where the value of hours is equal to three and the value of this credit attribute is equal to G. Okay, so this one, while hours equals three is true, credit equals G is not true. And since we have the AND operation here, we're looking for both of these expressions to evaluate to true. So this tuple is actually going to evaluate to false for this compound Boolean expression here. So this is gonna get rid of all of our courses with a value of U or undergraduate for credit, leaving behind only the tuples that have a value of G for credit and a value of three for hours, okay? So in this case, we lose uh, what, one, two, three, more of our tuples. So our resulting relation would have just these six tuples where the hours is equal to three and the value of credit is equal to G. <clears throat> in addition to our and operation, we can also use an or operation where we need either one of these uh, expressions to evaluate to true, but not both of them to evaluate to true. So in this case, we're selecting from our course relation tuples where college equals business or college equals engineering. Well, for this first uh, tuple where we have a value of arts and sciences for college, college is equal to business, that's false. College equal engineering, that's false. So since neither one of these evaluates to true, this tuple would not be returned in the resulting relation, okay? In this case, we have a value of business, college equals business equals business. Well, yes, that's true. Uh, business equals engineering, that's false, but we only need one of these to be true because we have this or operation. So this would be returned, education would not be returned, uh, business would be, engineering would be, and it's just hopefully uh, seems pretty straightforward at this, at this point. So out of these uh, 12 original tuples, four would not be returned and these eight others would be returned. But then things can get a little bit more complex here. So now we want, we have some, uh, some or, or we have an or operation and an and operation. Okay, so we're looking for any tuples where college is business or college is engineering and the value of hours is greater than two. Okay, so in this case, we're going to lose this tuple here because even though it's business, it, is not, it does not uh, meet this criteria of the value of hours being greater than two. Now, when we start having, kind of combining these or and and operators, we have to be very careful about how we evaluate this, right? And it's best to put these in parentheses to kind of force the order of the execution of these operations. Because just like in math, where we have an order of operations, where we do uh, parentheses and exponents, followed by multiplication and division, followed by addition and subtraction, right? Because five times two plus four is 14, right? Because you do five times two, then plus four. But if you messed up the order of operations, uh, five times two plus four, if you did four plus two, well, that's six times five is 30, right? That's not the right answer. Because if you mess up the order of operations, things don't work out right. Same thing here. If we wrap parentheses around college equals business or college equals engineering, 
and ours is greater than two, we're saying we have to be one of these colleges and the value of ours has to be greater than two, which is very different than saying college equals business or college is equal to engineering and ours is greater than two, right? Because if we look at this tuple right here, this tuple would be returned by this second query, whereas this tuple would not be returned by the first query. Because the second query is saying, I want a tuple if the value of college is business or if the value is engineering and the hours is greater than two, right? So a little, uh, a little nuanced difference there, but one that's very important. And if we're not very cognizant, cognizant of this could make our, uh, our results come back differently than what we would expect. Now, if we leave off the parentheses altogether, your and operation is going to be evaluated first. Okay, so if we didn't put the parentheses, this second query is what the DBMS uh, would return. Okay, and if we wanted you know, the result that would have been returned by the first query, we're, uh, we're not going to get that, and that's uh, likely going to cause problems. But just to alleviate any confusion, I would strongly suggest uh, adding parentheses uh, where you think they might be needed because it pretty much never hurts to have them. Uh, and, and can alleviate some confusion. So be careful, uh, be careful with that. So moving on to our other unary operator from select to project, uh, whereas select returned this horizontal subset of tuples, project is going to return a vertical subset of attributes from a relation, thereby reducing the degree. And we represent our project relational algebra operator with this lowercase pi. So this looks very similar to our select. We have our pi here, we have our relation here, which again, remember this is just an expression that evaluates down to a relation. So this could be a relation or another relational algebra expression right here where R is. And then in our subscript, we have the list of attributes that we want to project. And let's see, yeah, this is what I, what I just said. Um, but one additional point here, note that if the list of attributes that we're projecting is not a super key, that is it's not unique within relation, our duplicate tuples will not be returned in that relation. And that's because if you remember back to our discussion a few weeks ago where we talked about the definition of a relation, we said that a relation cannot have any duplicate tuples. Every tuple in a relation has to be unique, okay? And we're going to see as we dig a little bit deeper into our SQL that, uh, that we've talked about at these different levels of abstraction or these different levels of talking about our databases when we talked about entities in our conceptual model and relations in our relational model and tables when we actually implement our physical model and, and get this into SQL, that entities, relations, and tables were all kind of the same thing, except there are some little nuanced differences, right? When we talked about entities, we could have things like multi-value attributes and composite attributes and other things that don't really exist when we when we talk about uh, relational modeling. So kind of similarly, while we say relations do not allow duplicate tuples, that's not strictly true when we start looking at the implementation of tables in a database. Often tables can have duplicate rows within a database. So this gets to be a little bit uh, confusing and a little bit of a mismatch between uh, what we would expect to happen based on our relational algebra and what actually happens when we query the database. But uh, we'll point this out uh, again as we actually get into implementing this. But when we look at the output of the relational algebra, uh, if the projected attributes are not a super key, our duplicate tuples are not going to be displayed in that resulting relation. So in this case, and I think this is bringing up another poll everywhere, uh, 
opportunity for you. If we wanted to project from this course relation, the college attribute, okay, the resulting relation is only going to have one column or one attribute, or it's going to have a degree of one. It's the resulting relation will only have this college attribute, but how many tuples are going to be present here? Well, at first glance, we might think there's going to be 12 tuples because we're not doing any kind of selection to reduce the cardinality of this resulting relation. However, because we are in a situation where college is not a super key, we're not going to have a bunch of tuples that are duplicating this value of business uh, six different times, right? Or education twice. So what we actually find is that we have five tuples in the resulting relation uh, since college is not a super key. And note that one of the tuples contains this null value uh, where we have a course architectural history that is not associated with the college for whatever reason, right? And so uh, this data it comes from uh, some examples in your book. Uh, so you can kind of follow along with that uh, if you are so inclined. But uh, yeah, the resulting relation from projecting this college attribute from the course relation is going to look like this. Now we have a, uh, a new relation we haven't seen before called department now. If we were to project the name attribute from this department relation, we have kind of a similar situation where name is not a super key, right? Because we have two economics departments, one that's in the College of Arts and Sciences and one that's in the College of Education. So we're gonna get five tuples return in this resulting relation since name is not a super key. However, if we were to project both name and college, well, name and college together is a super key. We can uniquely identify every tuple in the relation based on the combination of these two attributes. So in this case, we are going to get all six tuples returned, or we're gonna get six tuples returned uh, in the resulting relation, okay? So those are our unary operators of select and project.